All right, guys, we're getting outdoors here. Just made it to the Sears K ruins. Uh, this week, I'm basically going to be taking you to a bunch of different Native American sites and uh, probably a museum as well and put it all in a video to show kind of how much Native American culture there is right here in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. So it's a really short hike, not even really a hike. It's kind of a less than a mile walk up to the ruins. So let's do this. Discovered in 1867 by the 5th Cavalry Regiment of the United States Army, the Sears K ruins quickly became one of the greater finds of ancient Hohokam dwellings. So it's not much of a hike. Uh, this is basically the start of the path and it just goes along that ridge there and the ruins are right up there. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, it attracts visitors worldwide. So you can see why they would uh, build a 40 room settlement up here. I mean, you've got panoramic views and you can definitely keep an eye on the game as well as your enemies. You can definitely see right here the uh, remnants of some man-made structure here. The thing I like about uh, Sears K Ruin is they restore some of it, but they leave a lot of it unrestored so you can kind of see exactly how dilapidated it is and you don't see everything in kind of a false state restored by archeologists and what have you. Built as a defensive fort around 1050 AD and abandoned less than 200 years later, Archaeologists are unsure as to why the Hohokam people were so quick to abandon such a fortified structure. A few theories exist, but none have been validated. So it looks like uh, there was a little bit of restoration work done here. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And it doesn't look like there's any done right here. After the Hohokam left the land, it was later claimed by members of the Tonto Apache tribe, who utilized the structure and land for its resources in proximity to important trade routes. So you can see one dwelling there, another dwelling here, another dwelling that's uh, standing in, and one right there. There's a lot of structures here. It's amazing. So you can definitely see why they wanted to live up here because it's expansive views that allows protection from rivals as well as um, letting them keep an eye on the game, you know, the animals that they wish to hunt and whatnot. Okay, this right here, you guys, is just laying on the ground. I'm not allowed to take these and I'm going to put it back, but this is a pottery shirt. While visiting publicly accessible and popular sites, you may come across a pottery shirt or an artifact. I came across both while filming this video. Unless they are in immediate danger of being trampled on or run over, it's best to leave them alone. Here's another piece of pottery that uh, is just laying there. So these were right on the pathway, so I'm going to have to move these because if they get stepped on broken, I mean, I wouldn't want that to happen. It's important to keep these places as you found them, including the artifacts and antiquities you find. If they are right on the pathway and you feel you can safely relocate them away from footsteps or mountain bike tires, there's no harm in moving them to the side. If they are already out of harm's way, it's best just to leave them alone. So it says this compound contains two rooms and two courtyards and some litter that I'm gonna be picking up. Come on, people. Many Native Americans consider places like this sacred, and just because we're allowed to visit them doesn't mean we have the right to disturb them. If I see a pottery shirt or other artifact in harm's way, I'll certainly move it. Otherwise, I leave them where they are. All right, so this is a mystery room, apparently. Uh, they don't know why it was built with rounded corners, but uh, it's pretty cool. Out of all 40 structures, only one has rounded corners. Archaeologists have no clue as to why that is and have given it the nickname Mystery Room. All other rooms look something like this, squared corners and either rectangular or squared living spaces. All right, that was a lot of fun, guys. Uh, a lot of history here. Going to head back out and uh, hit up another location tomorrow. All right, guys, we're at the Dixie Mine Trail in the McDowell Mountains, and uh, we're going to go hike to Petroglyph. It's about 100 degrees out today, which sucks, but uh, at least no one will be on the trail. So let's get going. Now, the one advantageous thing about hiking in record heat is uh, there are not a lot of bugs out right now. If you hike this in the spring, the insects are all over you, sometimes uh, so bad you have to wear repellent. So that's kind of nice. This 
this right here is prickly pear cacti. You can actually eat this, it's edible. Uh, you can do it two ways. You can either boil it, take the thorns off and boil it, or you can just take these and throw them right on the campfire and uh, cook them and the thorns will burn right off. So those power lines run all the way up to the Thompson Peak radio towers up there. And uh, I'm gonna film that hike separately, but that's a really, really cool hike. This wash right here was used by Native Americans way, way back in the day. That stone right there, see all those depressions in that stone? So that's a grindstone. Those depressions are made by Native Americans grinding seeds into flour hundreds if not thousands of years ago. The Dixie Mine Trail is a gently rolling 4.3 mile out and back trail if you hike to where it intersects with the Jeep Road. Native Americans occupied various parts of the McDowell Mountains. A natural spring pumping three gallons of water per minute has provided both Native Americans and ranchers with a valuable water source that made living in these parts sustainable. A short jaunt through some foliage reveals both a mine and historic petroglyphs. During snake season, you have to be careful here as tall grass and fallen leaves provides an abundance of hiding spots for rattlesnakes. Ah, here's the lower portion of Dixie Mine. Established in 1877 by miners who noticed red quartz, a common indicator of gold and silver deposits, the Dixie Mine changed ownership a few times, but it never yielded any significant deposits. In 1977, a judge ruled that the claims were no longer efficient, awarding the land to the McDowell Mountain Regional Park. that that I see right there. There we go. Wow. There they are, right there. The petroglyphs span three different time periods, archaic, hohokam, and historical. The archaic period dates back over 800 years ago and is identified in these petroglyphs as unrecognizable, abstract shapes. The hohokam dates up to a few hundred years ago and can be seen as stick figures in animal silhouettes. The historical period dates back roughly 100 years and is seen as initials in the rock. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. That says HP 1925. That's Henry Pemberton. He was a rancher way back when. It's important when viewing these petroglyphs to never touch them, as the oil from fingerprints can speed up their deterioration. As they are quite popular and regularly visited, neglecting efforts to preserve them will lead to a quick decline and an eventual loss of these treasured depictions of a time long since past. All right, that's a wrap on this one. On to the next. All right, guys, I'm at a place called Brown's Ranch Trailhead, and I'm on my way to Cathedral Rock right now. It's an old Native American rock shelter, and apparently they used to grind grain into flour out there and do a lot of food prep so there should be some evidence of that let's go check it out established in the early 1920s brown's ranch is a former cattle ranch consisting of an upper and a lower ranch it has since been largely reclaimed by mother nature and acquired by the city of scottsdale and converted into a recreation area Particularly popular with mountain bikers, Brown's Ranch Trailhead offers an expansive trail system that spans far beyond the ranch area, which has since been reduced to some foundation and rusted out structures. It is uh, definitely heating up out here, so I'm uh, looking forward to getting there and uh, eventually getting back to an air-conditioned car. It's about 105 right now. All right, we're at uh, the old Historic Brown's Ranch. Though not as frequented by hikers, there is a summit trail to the top of Brown's Mountain, as well as branch off trails that lead to some Native American structures, including Cathedral Rock. We're 
getting ever so closer now. We're almost there. Brown's Ranch is a great trail system. I like hiking this one when my legs are tired and I'm looking for some flatter ground for recovery. Cathedral Rock, right here. Used by the Hohokam as a work site, various depressions in the ground can be seen by visitors. Think of how many generations it took for these to be made simply by taking a stone and grinding seeds into flour. That took many, many generations to make these depressions here. These circular depressions are the result of generations of grinding seeds and grain into flour. So someone left this here. This isn't an actual grindstone. There's no historical significance, but that's basically what they use. They use a stone similar to this and just smashed and ground seeds into uh, flour. And it wore out the granite. And that's pretty amazing because the granite is very, very tough material. Think of how many generations it took to wear out the granite into those holes. I mean, it's amazing. This has been used for many, many years by the Native Americans. And I can see why, because before I hiked up here, I was sweating, I was hot, I was just like, whew, you know, 105 out, 110 maybe. It's a record day. I'm in here, I could stay here all day. I mean, this is, this is perfect. It's uh, gonna be at least 10 or 15 degrees cooler. No sun beating down, it's very pleasant. And, They have a pretty nice view out the back there. I would imagine uh, they probably hung out there too and took in the sights. The Hohokam were exceptional farmers and they would harvest corn, beans, and squash and mash them up by using the stones. Mesquite pods were commonly turned into flour here. Their rough texture had a wearing effect on the granite. Over the years, these stones would wear grooves and holes into the granite surface. Ancient people that predated the Hohokam used similar techniques as well, making this rock shelter a significantly historic place. Oh, my phone just said it's 111 degrees out. I'm sweating like crazy. I'm well acclimated to this, but I'm gonna pick up the pace and try and get back. This was a great hike, and that place is just amazing to see. A place so important to Native Americans so many years ago, and it's free. You just, uh, you just hike to it. And look at that. It's always a good idea to keep your eye out for things. That right there is an arrowhead. Literally just sitting right on the side of the road here. Right on the side of this main area at Brown's Ranch. The Federal Antiquities Act prohibits taking any artifacts from public land, though it's said that there's an exemption for surface hunting arrowheads known as the Jimmy Carter Clause in Section 470. I'm not a collector and haven't done the proper research, so I was happy to relocate it. I put this one back in the soft sand at the very side of the trail, where it's safe from mountain bike tires. So you're not allowed to take these. I've come across a couple of them out here. There's a lot of hunting activity back in the day. So these go there. All right guys, we're getting outdoors here. I just made it to the Pueblo Grande Museum and uh, it looks like there's not really a lot of people here. And uh, the 100 degree day probably has something to do with that. But either way, uh, that's really good for me. So let's go check it out. A part of the Phoenix Parks and Recreation Department since 1929, the Pueblo Grande Museum is a National Historic Landmark and happens to be the largest preserved archeological site in the Phoenix area. The museum has many interactive displays with an archeological theme.
So part of the trail is closed off for renovation, but uh, we're going to check out the part that's not. Though the trail section that leads to the partially excavated platform mound was closed due to renovation, the rest of the walk was fantastic. The walk includes a large, partially excavated pre-Columbian platform mound, a ball court, replica housing, and simulated gardens. The Hohokam were industrious farmers, and they developed a fencing system to keep out invasive wildlife. There's the freeway, and here's a historical site. Kind of makes you wonder uh, how many other historical sites were built over and developed on without knowing. The ball courts date back approximately a thousand years. After 1100 AD, and for reasons unknown, the Hohokam discontinued the use of ball courts. Thought to hold ceremonial ball games, markets, and various religious ceremonies with ancient rituals, the ball courts drew quite a crowd and were an important part of the Hohokam social structure. Though the dwellings are replicas, they were built to spec using materials and methods of the time. They bear a striking resemblance to actual pit houses. I'm usually not a fan of replicas or restored structures, but these are very realistic and extremely well done. Oh, we got some uh, shade over here. It's kind of nice. Hohokam suburbs. The suburbs offer a more modern take on Hohokam society, depicting structures utilized after pit houses. They had a more open feel, better storage options, and improved structural integrity. So this of course is a uh, replica, it's not an actual uh, house. No mortgage, no property taxes back then, I'll take it. Pueblo Grande is a valuable piece of history. Its ability to take visitors back a thousand years ago and show what life was like back then is something everyone should come and experience. Though entrance fees tend to change, I paid less than $10 to get in. It's well worth the money. My last museum stop was the Deer Valley Petroglyph Preserve. All right, made it to the Deer Valley Petroglyph Preserve. And uh, once again, it's a pretty quiet day. Doesn't look like there's a lot of people here, so that's great, good news for us. A 47-acre desert space housing the largest concentration of petroglyphs in the Phoenix area. The Deer Valley Petroglyph Preserve is one of Phoenix's best museums in terms of Native American culture. Inside, there's an array of displays and genuine artifacts such as arrowheads and pottery sherds. Everything is well laid out and very informative. The staff are very friendly and the facility is immaculately kept. The air conditioning was quite nice on such a hot day as well. It's a cool little replica here. Outside, there's a short quarter mile walk containing various petroglyphs and artifacts found on site. All right guys, starting the trail at the uh, Deer Valley Petroglyph Preserve. So let's check it out. And see what it is. Right off the bat you can see pottery right on the ground. Oh wow look at this. There's one right there. Oh very cool. Look at that. A mock archaeological dig showcases what it looks like when archaeologists worked to uncover the past and pieced together a history of ancient people. It was very realistic and quite fun to see. Grindstones were on display and lined up right along the pathway where you could just walk right up to them. I didn't touch them, but it was fascinating to see them up close like this.
very faded, but you can definitely see some deer there. The Kissing Deer, the most famous petroglyph in the preserve, is situated right off the pathway, allowing visitors to get an up close and personal look. There are 1,571 documented carvings here, wow. I've seen a lot of petroglyphs during my desert hikes, but these ones seemed a little more special. Deeply etched into the rock, they were meticulously crafted and depicted an array of images, from plants and animals to people and shapes. Oh, I see him. You know, way up there. I don't think we're going to be able to get a very close zoom in on those. A lot of these ones are up on the hillside. And uh, you kind of need a zoom lens, but very cool nonetheless. My brother decided to join me on the last leg of this expedition. We met up at the Spur Cross Ranch trailhead and set out to explore some ruins. All right. I'm putting 10 in there, even though it's only three bucks a person. Yeah, because we're real philanthropists. <laughs> All right, we have it on GoPro. 10 bucks. <laughs> I just cool. slammed my thumb. <laughs> These ruins are situated on a mountaintop far away from the trailhead. Though popular among visitors, not as many people see these ruins, as the hike up is considered pretty physically demanding. My brother and I are both avid hikers, so we didn't have much trouble with the terrain. The triple digit heat was another story. Though it didn't cause any physical problems, it certainly made the hike a lot more grueling. We made sure to pack plenty of water and stay hydrated. Alright, getting really close now. The trail's getting uh, a lot more rocky, but it's still fun. All right, well, we made it to the uh, saddle. There's the ruins right up there. So we're gonna go up that way. The pathway to the top was a little narrow with some loose terrain, but we negotiated it just fine. The anticipation of seeing the ruins was our main focus. And as they came into view, they did not disappoint. Oh, wow. Dang, that is amazing. Holy. There they are. This is insane. Look at these. These ancient Hohokam ruins were originally a fortress constructed nearly a thousand years ago. They were built on this hilltop for strategic reasons. Overlooking an important trade route, the Hohokam people were able to keep an eye on any hostile outsiders, as well as provide refuge to passers-by. professional guiding companies offer guided tours of these ruins, but we thought it would be best to admire them in peace, interpreting the history in our own way. We made sure not to wander off of the pathway up top or disturb any rocks, plants, or artifacts. Places like this are important and should be kept in pristine condition. I was happy to see no traces of litter up top. Everything looked undisturbed and well respected. This place is amazing. Honestly, I wish we could spend more time up here, but uh, it's getting hot and we're going to get going. So we'll be back though, definitely. Uh, the important thing is to keep this in its natural state. Don't trample off trail. Um, don't mess with any of the artifacts, etc., etc. But it's a great place to enjoy things. So yeah, definitely impressed. Uh, I think it's my favorite one so far out of everything we've experienced so far. Learning about other cultures is important, and this week of exploring and learning certainly made an impact on me. I'm very fortunate to live in a region with so much history and so many historical remnants. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. There's many more adventures to come.